this brother Peter with tidbits from the word let's take a look in John's vision in the book of Revelations at the letter written to the seven churches there were seven there were actually literally seven churches in Asia at that time and these seven churches were uh, proclaimed in one in verse four and John he said to the seven churches which are in Asia now remember John saw Christ three ways he saw him as the Christ that was the Christ that is and the Christ that was to come and everything in the divinity in divinity is in three dimensional it is three dimensional just like man man is a trichotomy he is a body a soul and a spirit that's a trichotomy he is, he is not a, a twofold thing just a body and a spirit he is a body soul and spirit he is a trichotomy we would have many people today that would uh, say that a man is just here and then gone he's here he's like an animal he has no soul and but we do have a soul Jesus clearly states that the soul of man is the thing that is already connected to God do you remember when uh, the guy saw the ladder Jacob saw the ladder in the Old Testament and he saw the angel of God which was Jesus Christ ascending and descending that was the picture for you and I of our soul when we ask Jesus to forgive us our sin come into our heart and save our soul we have a direct line invisible line directly into heaven the Bible said we are positionally already written down in the Lamb's Book of Life we are already present in the presence of God from the uh, from the soul and that's the heart and the soul God looks on the heart you know he doesn't have to look down here on the earth to see your heart he can look right over there at your soul and see your heart written in the Lamb's Book of Life this is a connection if you please directly to God the umbilical cord of the soul directly from God one day you're going to be birthed in to the eternal kingdom of God in the body and how is that going to happen well you have to close the door to this earth that is called death when you close the door and, and people call it death God calls it sleep he doesn't call it death <laughs> he said those that sleep in me death is when you die and go to hell that's death uh, life eternal life is not death it's passing from this earth into the eternal kingdom of God that's eternal life it starts when you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin come in your heart that's when eternal life starts and it starts at that point now he said to the seven churches and the seven spirits before the throne now the were he's looking now at the throne he is looking personally uh, but with his natural eyes he had seen Jesus and he is now looking directly at the throne of God and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the Prince of Kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins with his own blood this is Jesus Christ who washed us from and and by the way has John in the presence of Jesus he's in the presence he's talking he's preaching right in the presence of the very his very God his very father God is Jesus Christ who has accepted him and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and uh, dominion forever and ever now he's saying wow this is the one we worship him forever and ever and so and I'm I, and you know what John and and uh, uh, Paul had a vision uh, that that gave them uh, some things that other people didn't know about and it's like Paul Paul said uh, you know something <laughs> boys boys I tell you what I would love right now to just die off and go to heaven but it is needful for me to stay here and be a witness for you and work for you that you may grow in the Lord he said behold uh, he cometh in the clouds with every eye shall see him and they also which proceed him 
and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. Uh, even those that pierced him, excuse me, that pierced him, not proceed, pierced him, those that stuck the pierced side of Jesus with the spear are going to be a witness to him coming. All eyes of all men that were born from Adam all the way to the last person that's born on this earth is going to lay eyes on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, at his coming. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. This was Jesus speaking here. I am the beginning and the end. Go go to your Bible, you who are watching and, and you have a Bible. Go to it and find Proverbs chapter 8. Find, start in verse 22, if you please. And I know it's called wisdom there, but that is Jesus Christ is talking about. He said, I am the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, look at this, and was, and which is to come, the Almighty. He is, he was, and he is to come again. He, he is his own witness. If you please, the Bible said, do not bring a man to court or make an, action, an, an accusation against him, railing accusation against him, unless you have two or three witnesses. Well, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit were three witnesses, and they could witness of themselves through themselves because they were one. You say, how do you know that, Brother Peter? Well, in the beginning, God said, let us make man in our own image. He was talking to the Trinity. So therefore, you have the Trinity. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, just like we are triune. And then John said, I am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and, uh, patience, and the patience of Jesus Christ, who's in the isle, I would call. He, he was in the isle of Patmos. And... Uh, uh, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Why was he in the Isle of Patmos? He was in prison. <laughs> the Isle of Patmos was prison. He was in prison. Had John, he's in prison. And uh, uh, they think he's gone mad there and he's in prison. By the way, he has somebody pinning this down for him while he's there. And he's in prison. And uh, He's saying, now while I'm here, I'm here for a purpose. <laughs> he said, for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm here for the testimony of Jesus. They threw me in here. They said, you can't go around preaching this Jesus Christ like you are. And they so they, they banished me over to this island. And here I am on the Isle of Patmos. But I'm here for a reason. God put me over here for a reason. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, and saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyrosida, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Now the last church, by the way, we are going to be in, I believe, is going to be the church of Laodicea. That's going to be the church where people have uh, faded away. They've sat in the church. The preacher has become worldly. The world has got into the church and the church has become worldly. I say it this way. What a beautiful picture. A ship in the water. What an ugly picture. The water in the ship. If the ship's in the water, things are fine. But when the water's in the ship, things aren't so fine. Now here's the church in the world. And the church in the world is a beautiful picture. But the world in the church is ugly. An ugly picture is the world in the church. What have we come to today? We've come to dressing down today. My daddy said to me, shine your shoes, son. Shine your shoes, especially on Sunday. Shine your shoes. Put your best on. Whatever your best is, you wear your best. I remember when I was a young boy, my daddy liked me to wear the best. But the only way I could wear the best is if we went to the Salvation Army or somebody gave us something that was nice that they had that we never could afford. A suit jacket, a pair of pants. Always 
always, inevitably, too big for me. But I wore them anyway. <laughs> so I might have had the best I had on, but it was baggy and saggy. But I'll never forget my daddy he was a poor man. He was asked one time to speak at a conference. And he had to hitchhike from the state of Maine to the state of Pennsylvania. It took him three days to hitchhike there. He wasn't dressed in the tie and suits and the beauty of those other people. He had the beauty in his heart. He had the ability to mince the words. He had the ability and the love of Christ in him that delivered him time after time after time across this nation, hitchhiking to meetings and going to places where he didn't have a car, he didn't have the money. He didn't have what it took to look like. He got there. And when they were ready to announce him, they announced somebody else because they didn't like his appearance. They, he had hitchhiked from Maine to Pennsylvania and they did not like his appearance. So they chose a good-looking fellow to get up and preach. I don't know what would have happened had it been turned around and Daddy had got up to preach. But I just believe even out of that crowd of preachers, there would have been some of them repented of their way and saw here's a man walking across the nation, poor, that God has met his need over and over and over and over again. I seen my daddy pray food in on the table. We didn't have any. I seen him pray a car in. We didn't have a car. I saw him pray a house in. I saw my daddy buy three nice farms while I was young and, and he didn't have anything. God was with him. He got saved in 1948 in a Billy Graham crusade and he jumped right in with both feet. He got a Bible. He sat down and he got in that Bible and he believed what it said and he started following it. And I'm one of the results of him following that Bible today. Even though I was a rebel, didn't get saved until I was 30. Gave my daddy heartaches. Gave him pain, trouble, and uh, throughout his life, as many other people did. But here I am today, an answer to prayer. My mama in the house today, right now, we're watching over her. She's 95 years old, and uh, young, I should say. And we have her with us. And we have a commission in life. You know what the Bible said? Honor your parents for this is right, and your days shall be many on the earth. And by the way, you can add days to your life by honoring your parents. My mother will be with us until she dies between my sister and myself, and we would like to keep her from now on. If the Lord performs a miracle, which I'm asking him to do in the next few months, and give us the finances to be able to keep my mother like we are now, and that's what I'm looking for to do. And I'm asking the Lord for that. And I'm looking for Him to meet that need. Since we made that commitment, we have had the devil come against us. But that's all right. Because the Lord has already got the victory over the devil. He has already beat the devil. <laughs> We're looking at John in Revelation. We're looking at him right into the last church. Church of Los Laodiceum. And he's saying, there'll be a great fall on the way. And in many churches there is, even in our church, there's a great falling away of the true gospel. Those people who cannot, cannot stand to the true gospel, cannot stand, cannot give up their selves to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, my time has come and gone. I must go. I will see you next time. Same place, same station, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word.